As we begin the Labor Day weekend, we look at whether there is anything to celebrate on the job front. San Diego's unemployment rate has doubled since the beginning of the economic recession. 80,000 people have lost their jobs, most in the construction and finance sectors. But Sandag's chief economist, Marty Cox, says there may be good news to look forward to. To put it in perspective for San Diego, we entered into this recession a little bit earlier than the national level did, maybe six plus months or so. And actually, if you take a look at our employment numbers today, I think we're bumping along on the bottom. We're with slight, we're, we're, the region tier economy is ready to turn around. It's been through all of the declines it needs to, to ring out any of those inefficient issues and, and the economy is ready to turn around. You can begin to see some of that from the stimulus program that's beginning to take effect here in San Diego. Our unemployment rate, although above 10 percent, not quite as bad as the state overall, and it seems to have stabilized, right, not getting worse, substantially worse in, in short periods of time. I think what was really foreseen on the horizon, the state of California's budget issue and whether or not a lot of the public education sector um, can't put people back to work, then that would, that would be a, an unforeseen or a unanticipated problem that not all the state would have to work, but the local level too. So Barbara, is Marty Cox's assessment of our unemployment situation realistic, optimistic, accurate? What do you think? Well, I think Marnie's correct in that I don't think the unemployment situation in San Diego is going to get a lot worse, but at the same time, I don't see it improving significantly until 2011. I mean, the construction industry, which is a lot of good, high-paying jobs, as he said, has been the hardest-hit sector. And that's going to be about the slowest to come back. I mean, people, you know, housing still is in decline. People aren't buying new homes. And until that starts to turn around, you know, we're not going to see a rebound in the construction sector. Yes, there are some stimulus construction projects like uh, the big hospital that's being built up at Camp Pendleton. But overall, this is a very s abysmal time for the San Diego economy and unemployment here. But I'm, I'm wondering, David, I mean, according to Marnie Cox, our unemployment rate is not as bad as the rest of the state. Why is this? Uh, well, um, I, I honestly am, am not sure. Um, I think, you know, it's interesting, you know, I, I go out a lot to eat and to, you know, to visit bars and things like that in the service. So the service sector seems seems robust to me when I go out there, so maybe that's it. Um, uh, I think we just need to, and the other, well, the other thing that I was thinking as he was talking is that Sandag, uh, who he works for, um, was a big proponent in, in bringing federal uh, s stimulus money uh, locally. So, of course, you know, he has an incentive, I think, to say that um, that it, it is partially responsible for, you know, the beginning of a turnaround here. I don't know that we, we, we really know that. Uh, well, Gloria, we have a much more diversified economy than most other regions in the state. I mean, we have technology, we have life sciences, we have tourism, we have agriculture, we have the military, we have the defense sector. So we have a cer the services sector. We have much more diversified economy, and that's why our un unemployment rate is not as bad as the rest of the state. What's interesting about that is I've, I've, I've spoken to Marnie Cox about uh, the, div diverse, the diversity of this economy, and he's concerned, uh, at least he was a couple of years ago when we talked about this, that, that, that we were locally we were putting uh, 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 much more emphasis on creating more tourism jobs, mm -hmm. uh, more service sector jobs uh, that tend to be um, lower value jobs than, than, than manufacturing and some of the things that Barbara's talking about. So how can new jobs be created so that some of those perhaps lower paying jobs won't be, we won't be so dependent on or that some of our unemployed people might find work? Well, t two, two ideas, Gloria. One, uh, use some of the uh, federal stimulus money if it could be used for construction projects, for parks, water projects, schools, things that would have a long-term impact in the community. And second, to start some sort of a venture capital fund using government money combined with private money that could invest in early stage life sciences and technology companies, which do provide the high paying jobs for our region. Well, those certainly are higher paying jobs. I'm just wondering, David, with such a high unemployment rate at this point, are we seeing the gap, let's say, between um, middle and low income people and the upper income people growing? 
I think we were seeing that before this recession hit, and from what I understand, it it has continued that that trend, that trajectory has continued. Um, so that's that's always my my big concern is that uh, we have a natural. Well, I wouldn't say it's natural, but we have a a, a trajectory where where people that have have money are you know get more money. The people you know the poor people are getting poorer. Um, at the same time, uh, the uh, the sensibilities of the people in this country, the electorate, tends to want people to take personal responsibility, and they don't want to pay for for people on you know welfare and childcare and 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 social services and that sort of thing. So it's going to be harder and harder for those people to make ends meet. And that's material for another whole segment. Thank you very much, David Rowland, Barbara Bree.